Back live here in Houston, Texas, taking a look at an uh, iconic sign downtown near BBVA Compass Stadium. We love Houston. A lot of folks do. A great day here in the Bayou City as we continue inside, a little bit cooler here, the uh, Post Oak Hilton near the Galleria, host site of the 2018 Southland Conference Football Media Day. Great to have you back with us. We continue with our morning session. Five teams spotlighted here this morning. We'll take a uh, midday break for lunch, and then we'll come back starting at 115 with six more previews as we get you ready for the new upcoming season. All right, we continue now with a look at the Demons from Northwestern State. Take a look. All right, taking a look at the quick facts for Northwestern State. They returned 14 starters this coming season, five on the offensive side, six defensively, uh, three on special teams as well. The Demons coming off a four and seven campaign, four and five in the uh, Southland Conference. They uh, tied four sixth place. They won three of their last four games, though, so they ended the season with momentum for sure. Season opener coming up on August 30th, a couple of days earlier than most programs. It's a Thursday night game in College Station. They take on Texas A&M. Southland Conference opener a couple of weeks later in Beaumont. They'll travel there to take on the Lamar Cardinals on September 15th. Head coach Brad Laird still holds the NSU career passing yardage record of over 6,000 yards. And of course, he is the new head coach in Natchitoches at Northwestern State. Pleasure to be joined on stage here as we continue our Southland Conference Football Media Day uh, by the new head coach of Northwestern State, uh, Brad Laird. Great, Brad Laird, great to have you with us here in Houston. Welcome again as a head coach to the Southland Conference and of course, Northwestern State, a school you know very, very well. I'll hand it off to you now. Thank you. You know, this time of year, you know, it's always exciting. You know, when you got media days, uh, you know, fall camp's right, a, right around the corner, and, and that's the case uh, for all of us here. So, you know, as, as we come here today, and, and myself, uh, as a first-year head coach, I, I tell you, um, I want to thank Tom and his staff uh, for a first-class uh, event. Uh, the organization, uh, the, the venue, uh, everything that goes in has been first-class, and I uh, wouldn't expect anything different from the South and Conference. And, you know, as we talk about the South and Conference, uh, it's, it's an honor of mine not only as a player uh, in the past to be able to compete uh, in this conference, but now uh, as, a, as an assistant coach and now a head coach uh, to be able to compete uh, in this conference. And, and, you know, that's the thing, as you've seen this morning, uh, you'll continue to see this afternoon uh, the quality of, of head coaches in this conference. Uh, some that, that I've coached against, uh, some that I've played against, uh, but also the quality student athletes uh, that, that are in this conference. And, and that's what makes it so exciting with the 11 teams uh, have the opportunity to compete uh, on Saturday nights in the fall. Uh, it, it's, it's an honor for us at Northwestern State. To rewind, I guess going back to December uh, when I had the opportunity to become head coach at Northwestern State, uh, the first thing you look at is hiring a staff. And, uh, and that's, what, uh, that's what I did. You know, we had to hit the ground running as far as recruiting, uh, but first and foremost uh, was hiring a staff. And, and the one thing that I wanted to look at uh, in hiring a staff, again, was being very diverse, uh, experienced, young, and everything in between. But I uh, had the opportunity, uh, coordinator-wise, to, to bring in two guys that, that have head coaching experience. Uh, was, did, was that a necessity? No, but, but at the end of the day, uh, they've sat in the same seat uh, that I'm sitting in now. And so to be able to lean on those guys uh, has been great uh, throughout uh, these past few months. Uh, first, Brad Smiley, uh, the opportunity to bring him in as our offensive coordinator. Uh, that goes back to 1996. Um, myself and Brad Smiley were graduate assistants at Northwestern State when I finished up playing uh, for the legendary uh, Sam Goodwin. Uh, Sam Goodwin, the head coach in this conference for 17 seasons. Uh, the winningest coach in this conference. Uh, but we had the ability to be graduate assistants together in 1996. Our paths went different directions. He went to Tulane. Uh, I went to high school 
uh, but it all geared back uh, at Northwestern State. He spent the last 11 seasons as Trinity Valley uh, Junior College head coach uh, with a lot of success, uh, winning championships, and running a high-powered offense, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, defensively, uh, Mike Lucas. Uh, Mike Lucas is, uh, is a name in this conference that, that goes back many, many years. Uh, goes back to defensive coordinator days at Sam Houston and the success that they had uh, before moving over to southeastern Louisiana and being the head coach for six seasons, winning coach of the year, winning a conference championship there. Uh, you know, so to bring those two guys back that have experience within the conference, uh, both have experience at Northwestern State. Uh, I talked about Brad Smiley in 1996 and also uh, Mike Lucas in 2014. Uh, when he was defense coordinator for one season uh, before leaving and going to the University of Lafayette. So, you know, you want to surround yourself with good people and, uh, and, and a lot of experience. And that's one thing uh, that I've had the ability to do, thanks to the administration at Northwestern State, to be able to bring these guys in. Fast forward to spring football, uh, the opportunity uh, for 15 practices to uh, incorporate three new schemes offensively. Uh, defensively and special teams. Uh, we all know as coaches, 15 days isn't enough to, to put everything in, but I tell you, it was a great start for us as a, as a coaching staff and as a football team uh, because the one thing about developing uh, a great football team and being consistent is relationships. And uh, not only just the X's and O's uh, that we implemented in the, in the spring, but also the relationships that we built with these young men um, that, that goes way beyond just the X's and O's on the field. Uh, but we were able to implement those uh, throughout spring practice that, that carries us over into the summer. Uh, the summer, uh, as we all know, is about to come to an end. But, but I tell you, uh, our, our young men have done a great job. Uh, they've sacrificed throughout the summer. Uh, the team meeting we had on July 1 uh, with 96 guys in the room uh, for the summer. And, uh, you know, we got close to 30 newcomers uh, that joined the returners that we have. But, but the thing that the summer allows this football te team to do is build team chemistry. Um, and, and, and throughout the strength and conditioning, Coach Jared Mide, our strength coach, uh, has done, done an outstanding job with these young men. Uh, kind of leading us into uh, the fall uh, and, and the expectations that we have. As we all stand here today in media day, we all have high expectations. And that's no different at Northwestern State. And, uh, and we want to carry over the momentum we had, uh, winning three out of the last four games last year. We took that into spring ball with the new staff, and we'll continue to take that into the fall. And so uh, we're really looking forward to the opportunity. Uh, we got five great home games. Uh, we talked about opening up at Texas A&M on a Thursday night on SEC Network. Really looking forward to that. Our players are looking forward to that, and that's something – uh, that they are building on during the summer and gearing themselves towards uh, because we know uh, what, what stands in front of us. But then leading our first home game September 8th on a Saturday night at Turpin Stadium against Gramlin State. And then you look at our home conference games. You know, we, you, you saw the preseason polls, and you look at our home conference games with uh, Sam Houston, uh, with McNeese State and Nichols State, along with Houston Baptist. So, you know, very excited about the season. The expectations will always be high at Northwestern State and no different this year. And uh, it's, it's an honor for me. I had the opportunity to listen to Nathan earlier and uh, no different than him to have the opportunity to come back to Northwestern State. And um, I've kind of been there uh, different times uh, throughout my career. And it actually started when I was probably 8, 9, 10 years old running around. Uh, as my dad was offensive coordinator and you know you don't realize at the time who you're surrounded by but when you look back and you reflect on the Bobby A. Bears uh, went on to play with the New Orleans Saints uh, the Joe Delaney's uh, if you know the with the Kansas City Chiefs Mark Duper who just recently is going to go into the Miami Dolphins Hall of Fame you know you don't realize at the time you know you're, you're surrounding yourself uh, by those and, and now have the opportunity to come back as a player as an assistant coach and now the head coach. So, you know, definitely, uh, you know, timing is everything. And, and uh, you know, you, the, the coaching profession just takes us down a, a windy road and, uh, but always leads us to the right spot. And this is the right spot for me at the right time. So really looking forward to the opportunity as we move forward. All right, we're going to open it up some questions now for Coach Lair for the next 10 minutes or so. We'll begin uh, up front. Doug, take it away. Coach Lair, you um, were a quarterback in college. 
You'd never coach defense until you became defensive coordinator at Northwestern in 2003. Um, do you have a preference either side of the ball, and will you be involved either or both sides of the ball? Well, the offensive side never left me. Uh, let's, let's make sure we got that clear. But, yes, I mean, that, you know, growing up and, 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 and when I was – Little, I was surrounded by an offensive guy. My dad being an offensive guy, and, and so I uh, really had no experience on the defensive side, uh, I guess, until uh, 2003, and, uh, and that's, that's where I've been since. But, but I tell you, what, what's been fun about this opportunity that I have is, is now uh, going and sitting in the, the quarterback's room and listening uh, to Coach Selfo. Uh, uh, coach the quarterbacks and, and being on the, that, that other side of the 50 uh, during the individual time and during group time. Um, you know, but I'm going to be involved with all players, and, and that's part of the relationship uh, that, that we're going to have as a staff. Uh, be very uh, involved with special teams, and, and that's the one reason I like about special teams, and our whole staff will be involved with special teams, is because that involves both offense and defense. So um, it, it'll, it'll be fun, like I said, getting on that other side of the 50, but, uh, but uh, you know, being involved with, uh, with both sides uh, and including the special teams. Coach, uh, Mike Eggenheimer with The Advocate. Uh, you come into this program needing to, to change a lot of things, turn, turn the program around. What's your strategy for doing that? Is it incremental? Is it all at once? H how do you do it? And, and is Nichols and what Coach Rebo, is, is that something you can kind of model the rebuild after? Well, you know, first, you know, to, to answer that question, it, it takes all of us. Um, everybody being on the same page and everybody moving in the same direction. And I think that's one thing uh, as, as I've come in, and, and it's, it's not just uh, between the white lines and the X's and O's. It's um, the nutrition, the hydration, uh, the being on time, doing the right things uh, from the equipment manager to the training room to the administration, uh, all having the same vision and the same goal uh, to move forward. And, you know, I know you reflected on – on, uh, on Tim Rebo and what he's done uh, over the last four years. And, um, you know, we're not sure the exact model that, that he took, but, but I know with, with our vision at Northwestern State, it, it's, it's all moving in the same direction. And, and that's the things that, that we look at uh, uh, from the players to the coaches and, and knowing that it's going to take all of us, from the janitors that's, uh, that's vacuuming the floor uh, to, to all of us being on the same page uh, and moving in that same direction. And, uh, raise your hand and we'll uh, bring a mic to you. Just state your name and affiliation. We got one here. While we're waiting on the mic, Coach, I'll ask you. Uh, actually, we'll wait. I'll ask you another question here in a moment. Got one right here. You go ahead. Robert Kelly, Tech Sport Publications. Coach, uh, coming from a 4 and 7 season last year, do you see any unique challenges you're going to face as a first year head coach? Well, I, you know, I think the thing that you get, we reflect back on is winning three out of the last four and taking the positives from that. Um, and, and now with the new coaching staff and implement, implementing the new schemes in all three phases, you know, I think that's the initial challenge in itself is to, you know, find the right guys uh, that are going to fit the mold that, that we want as, as a staff, uh, uh, maybe different than, than staffs in the past. And I think that's the thing that, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily say a challenge as much as it has been uh, that's the direction that we're going, and we'll take time. Uh, you know, 15 practices in the spring was not enough to, uh, for us to finalize some of the questions that we do have. Uh, the summer has been very important. Uh, that's why I reflect back on the 96 guys that, that are there right now and the importance of that, uh, not just the X's and O's, but the team chemistry. And now as we enter fall camp, uh, because, you know, the thing about it, it's not like you got a, a preseason game to get ready for and, and, and try to work the kinks out when you're going to open up at A&M on a Thursday night. So uh, fall camp will be very important to continue to find the, the right pieces to the puzzle in all three phases. Doug, question up front. Coach Laird, you ran a defense that was very aggressive when you were the defensive coordinator. And last year, your defense coalesced toward the end of the year and had some tremendous performances. What will be some of the differences and nuances that Mike Lucas adds? You'll see a lot of similarities in, in our thought process. Um, they want to be very aggressive, and, and that's the one thing that he brings and, and stress and turnovers. You know, that, that, that's the thing. We want to be great tacklers, and we want to create turnovers, and, and that's the one thing that, that, uh, that he's really emphasized uh, as we went through those 15 days of spring practice. And, you know, and I think the, the most important thing right now, again, is, is trying to, uh, you know, we, we move some guys' positions, uh, 
uh, to try to create uh, the best guys on the field at the same time. And uh, not only that, but, but linebacker-wise, when you, you know, look at one specific position defensively where we lost a lot to graduation and, and the top three tacklers on the team being linebackers and not a lot of experience coming back. Uh, trying to fit the mold there, but 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 a lot of similarities with uh, you know, hey, we got to be good tacklers and want to create turnovers. One final question, uh, Patrick. Uh, Coach, I'm curious because obviously you have made local recruiting a big thing. Northwest Louisiana, you, as you mentioned, a lot of guys from the 318 uh, area code, uh, but you also have. You've been there for a year, but you have a lot of new guys that are coming in, new coordinators. Do you have any idea yet what this team is or what they're capable of? And, and what do you think the timetable is before you really have a handle on exactly what kind of team you have in front of you? The interesting part about that question is, is when I talked about that team meeting that we had on July 1st, the 96 guys in there, the thing that we talked about, this football team, and, and probably no different than any other coach, we want to be the best that we can be. What is that? And that's the, the thing that we talked about is we don't know right now. Um, until we are in position where uh, we're doing everything right at all times because it's, it's not just the X's and O's. It's about doing the right thing off the field. Uh, because it's no different if, if you're inconsistent off the field, just like you're inconsistent studying for a test, the final product's going to be inconsistent. So we got to learn to be consistent with everything that we do. Uh, one of those is just uh, the, the first team meeting we had being on time and the importance of that. Um, you know, it took us five times to have the first team meeting. I, 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 you know, until we can all get there, I mean, we had one that was one minute late. Well, we come back the next morning at 515 to have a team meeting. Why is that? Because it's no different if I'm an offensive lineman and I'm taking that first step. That first step is very important, just like being on time and, and training our mind where we're always doing the right thing, where we don't flip the light switch and decide, okay, it's 6 o'clock on Saturday night and we're playing Stephen F., let, you know, let's go to work. It, you know, it does not work that way. So I guess to answer your question, uh, in, in order to get to where we want to get to, the consistency's got to be there. And, and that's the one thing that we've stressed. Uh, you know, effort and att attitude and tempo has nothing to do with X's and O's, and that's one thing that we've talked about and, and will continue to do on a consistent basis. All right, we'll chat more with uh, Coach Brad Laird here in just a few moments. But uh, as we've done all morning and we'll continue uh, during the afternoon as well, we'll toss it over. Lincoln Rose standing by with a couple of student athletes from Northwestern State. Lincoln. Yeah, and Randy, a couple of seniors at the table. Uh, Zach Krolchek, the standout defensive end, coming back for his final year in Natchitoches. And, of course, Kalen Meggs, the tight end. Well, of course, obviously a head coaching hire you're familiar with, a promotion from the defensive side of the football but it's, it's unique in the sense, I imagine you're excited. You have a guy who's a former defensive coordinator, goes out and hires a great coach and Coach Lucas to take his spot on the defensive side. But you also have a guy who was a former quarterback, a prolific passer as a demon, and you know he's always going to be mindful, he says offense never left him, of what's going on on your side of the ball. Let's start first uh, with you. Uh, when you found out the hire, what was the first thought that went through your mind? Oh, man. Uh, when he first got hired, it was kind of, you know, shocking because I didn't know that he was gonna, he was up for the job. But once they finally hired me, you know, me and Coach Larry, we joke a lot because he think he's a funny dude. But, <laughs> but once I found out, I was extremely excited for him, and I'm glad he got hired because, you know, it's a guy that I know, and I know wants to put us in the best situations to win. Zach has. Defensive coordinator Brad, Brad Laird uh, changed now that he's head coach Brad Laird. No, I don't think he's changed much, but uh, I mean, he's got all the power now, and he's the same dude that does everything he can for his players, and if he wants to win, that's what we're going to do. Uh, Kalen, this new offense for the Demons is up-tempo. Where does a tight end fit in in offense like we're going to see this year? Oh, man, it's uh, really, in the best words, Coach Smiley puts it, I mean, says as he says, make yourself available. So if you learn the offense, you can be put anywhere in our offense. It doesn't matter what position you play. We got running backs that'll go to slot receiver, tight ends that'll go to slot receiver. So it's really just how much of the offense you can learn and know within the time being. Uh, we talked about some of the best bookends on the defensive line, you and uh, Obi Ibioma, of course. Uh, uh, how much fun is practice challenging one another? How much uh, do you all push one another on a game day? Well, he's a lot faster than me, so I try and be fast. So. I mean, it's a lot of fun. We compete and try and get there at the same time. 
in terms of goals team wants to make a big stride in the first year under a new head coach but individually where is there room for you all still now going into your senior campaigns to take the biggest steps I would say just you know make a name for myself more you know try to get involved in the team leadership role and just make sure the young guys are following the same footsteps that we're trying to show them the right way to succeed and on the offensive side of the ball what is the emphasis there besides consistency that they're pounding home with you all? Uh, we call it eat, effort, attitude, and tempo. I mean, every play, you know, you might not be getting the ball, but if the play is running to the left and you're on the right side, you need to try to get to the left side as fast as you can. In order to follow the ball, make a block for a teammate, you might sprint a guy open, and he might score a touchdown that wins the game or something like that. And attitude comes from, you know, you might not be in this play, but you need to show the same attitude when you're on the field, off the field, cheering your, your teammate on, cheering for the defense when they need a big stop, and you know, showing, showing excitement during the game. Zach, it's our second year to have media day here in Houston. Uh, of course, we're pretty close to your backyard, just north of here in Conroe. You went to the Woodlands High School. Uh, but how does a Houston kid, again, it, the Southland Conference loves being uh, right here in Houston because so much talent from the surrounding area, let alone Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas. How did you find your way to playing your college ball in Natchitoches? Well, it started to blend and uh, it really started out because Coach Ben Norton, who recruited me, was there talking to our DC, Coach Rocco, and we were just talking about hunting and two weeks later he offered me. So that's how that happened. Uh, how'd, that hunt, uh, how'd that hunting conversation play out? Turned out good. Got an offer, so. And so for individual goals for you and your teammates, uh, any guys you think have made particularly big strides that maybe we haven't talked about as much on our live broadcasts uh, during the year that we may be calling the name of qu quite often this year? No, I think you might be calling a lot of names from our team. I think everyone's taking a big stride in the right step, and we're going to be a winning program this year. Randy, we are hearing all the right things about what's going on in Natchitoches. Uh, again, uh, exciting times with Coach Laird.